Can you skirt the Illinois assault weapons ban by buying a gun in Wisconsin and taking it back to Illinois? We'll ask noted criminal defense attorney Tom Grieve about this. Illinois assault weapons ban, it's all the rage out there, all the kids are talking about it. Um, nobody's complying with it, but, uh, but everyone's talking about it. And we had a question, it was like, well, can I just go outside of the state of Illinois and buy a, a, an assault weapon, allegedly assault weapon, bring it back to Illinois and everything's okay because the state police are still allowing people to register it. I'm gonna vote no on this one, but you know, I defer to your expertise. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm going to vote no too, and there's a variety of reasons as to why, but we'll start with the fact that it's going to be illegal for the FFL to sell it to you, because when an FFL is dealing with somebody from another state who's buying in their state, right, so we've got two states, they have to follow the more strict of the two states' laws. Which is always going to be Illinois. Which will always be <laughs> Illinois compared to any state. That yeah. borders Illinois. No matter where you go, the Illinois law is going to be more strict, and that FFL will have to follow Illinois law. I'm going to be very worried if, uh, if that's not the case, particularly speaking as a neighboring state here. Uh, but right, so at the end of the day, look, it, you're going to be stuck by your own laws. It's just what it boils down to on that. Now, that's notwithstanding the fact that if you are going to register it, which I realize borderline no one is, but if you are going to register it, you presumably are going to be having to fill out basically lie on an affidavit saying that you were in possession of it prior to a particular date. Oh, yeah, that's great. So you're going to get into other issues and there's going to be a transfer list and all that. Uh, so, right, there's, there's going to be issues. So, look, it's going to be important to add that we're painting in low resolution, broad strokes. There's always exceptions to things. So, for instance, there's some old ATF rulings out there concerning college students. There's some old ATF rulings out there when we're talking about folks who are in the military. They're from Illinois, but they're stationed out of state. Obviously, this doesn't necessarily apply to uh, police departments, police officers individually. It should. It, it probably does. Uh, but when we're talking about police departments or other governmental entities, um, it, it likely may not then. Yeah, the, uh, um, what is it, uh, PICA, the... Uh, Protect uh, Illinois Communities yeah, Act. Protect Illinois Communities Act. I call it PICA, boo, because I'm, uh, I'm not happy I with it. I see what you did there. It's what we call a play on words. That I'm is. a professional wordsmith. This, this whole thing just seems out of the ordinary to me that Illinois sheriffs aren't going to enforce the law. And then the Illinois governor says those sheriffs are derelict in their duties and they must be enforcing the law. But... More importantly, I think, I think the number might be up to 20,000 people who have registered something. Of 2 million FOID card holders, that's Firearms Owner Identification Card, in the state of Illinois. As you look at this, where do you think this is going? So I did a big long video on, on my channel where I broke down, here's what all the numbers are as far as here's the number of FOID card holders, here's what percentage of people own so-called assault rifles, i.e. AR-15, who are gun owners. So this is what percentage of gun owners own AR-15s. And I just kind of went through a bunch of studies to extrapolate approximately how many people in Illinois probably own AR-15s and other now banned weapons subject to the Protect Illinois Communities Act. And then I came up with a number of probably between about four to maybe 6% of people are complying with the law. Ballpark. You could make the argument that's actually much lower than that, by the way. Uh, I think you can make a lot of compelling arguments. And I was using the very conservative numbers that was friendly to Illinois, not the numbers that would be arguably friendly to the Second Amendment. Um, but where do I think it's going? I think it's going to the Supreme Court. I think there has always been a date with the Supreme Court of dealing with these so-called assault weapon bans, dealing with AR-15 bans, dealing with so-called high or large capacity magazine ban, i.e. normal sporting rifles, uh, America's favorite rifle, most popular rifle, most sold rifle, most bought rifle, as well as, of course, uh, ordinary magazines that go with it, right? Um, we just didn't know what the name was going to look like going to that dance with the Supreme Court, and it looks like it's going to be Illinois. Yeah, and as I watch this unfold, we keep saying it over and over again, and it's been, it's been said for decades, as long as I've been around the industry, that the bad guys are not complying with this anyway. The the people that they're arresting, the the gang members in Chicago don't have FOID cards with their Glocks with the auto switches and, and things like that. This is just a clear cut case of the law only applying 
to law-abiding citizens and only impacting law-abiding citizens in a, a very negative way, making them all criminals for possessing guns that they're never going to use in the commission of a crime, but now it's just a crime to have them. And, and quite frankly, I'm getting kind of sick of watching all of this happen, so I hope this makes it to the Supreme Court and gets a good, solid smackdown. And of course, the other interesting thing about Illinois as compared to, let's say, here in Wisconsin. So in Wisconsin, we do not need some sort of license in order to simply possess a firearm. In Illinois, you basically do. Okay? It's a little more nuanced, but broad strokes, that's, that's the gist to it. Which means that you lose the argument if you're a civilian disarmament enthusiast, if you're a gun controlling gun grabber, you lose the argument of, well, we've got to ban them so you can register them. So that way, if we find, you know, the bad guy, right? Well, he have, won't have his register. So that way we can get him, right? Th that's one of the convoluted lines of argument that I've seen out there, which is, well, how do we take guns away from bad people, right? Again, I am not saying that. Let me be clear. I am the messenger on this. We take guns away from bad people by making good people get firearms owner ID cards. That's, that's what you're saying, that, right? That's, well, well, here's the step they're missing. Well, there's many steps that they're missing, including the Constitution and the Second Amendment. But here's among their many steps missing. Here's one of them that's unique to Illinois as compared to Wisconsin. They have to have get firearm owners identification cards, meaning that, yeah, I really don't think these bad guys, oftentimes with many felonies, I don't think they're eligible for FOID cards down there. Okay. Meaning that any firearm they possess is presumably going to be illegal for them to possess it. So that just really goes to show the hollow nature of the arguments that they're using here of, you know, look, the firearm owner's identification card right now checks that box. If they believe that that box is a box that needs to be checked of, hey, good guys will register, so how can we tell a good guy from a bad guy? Well, we're going to have them get these cards, which is absurdly unconstitutional, but we're going to have them get these cards. Okay, and now you're going to make people register their guns so we can further tell good people from bad people. And then we should just leave them alone because we know they're good people, right? The yeah. people with the FOID cards and the registered guns are clearly the good people. And yeah, it's, it's convoluted, it's terrible, and I hate all of it. And one more thing I need to add is that the FOID card program was instituted in 1968. Illinois has been playing the long game on gun control, very slowly chipping away at rights and like, yeah, get the FOID card, don't worry about it. Well, now it's 2023 and you have a FOID card. There's two million people with FOID cards. Two million people better register their guns, right. give or take. Registration yeah. leads to confiscation. Leads to confiscation. And now they have a list of people, name, address, and phone number, who have a FOID card. And the question I've been asking for quite a while is, does the possession of a FOID card give the state of Illinois probable cause to issue a search warrant for guns at your home? Because you got your FOID card, and that you have to have that in order to own a gun. And you have a FOID card, but over here on the registry, you haven't registered anything. We're coming to your house to look. Well, I've got another one for you. So you've got the FOID card and you bought it from a dealer. That dealer goes out of business. What happens to their bound books? What happens to their records? They get boxed up and shipped off to a division of the ATF for basically firearm out of business uh, records. They can be digitized there. What happens if Illinois just starts doing subpoenas and warrants on those records to see who bought what when? And then, oh, hmm, well, looks like Jim Smith over here, who's a Ford card owner, he bought an AR-15 back in 1996, and uh, pff, he didn't register anything. So, you know, we're going to have to send some guys in there on a warrant to go do a search of his entire house and car and business to make sure he's not in possession of anything that he shouldn't be in possession of for his own safety. Right, to, to enforce the Pika boo I think I'm, I think I'm unhappy. There's a lot of ways that are, I mean, there's already so much abuse and, and absurdities going on, but depending upon how high they want to ratchet this up, and let's be clear, they will ratchet it up as far as they are allowed to ratchet it up. And when you say allowed, that's allowed by the voters of Illinois, allowed by the people of Illinois, because we could go to the polls and change some of this. That in, in conjunction with uh, federal courts, yeah. right? So it's, it's not just, yes, the people in Illinois 
could undo this absurdity if they voted for pro-gun politicians, for sure. Regardless of their, of their party or political persuasion, if they're pro-gun, this could be reversed in one election cycle. Realistically speaking, that's not gonna happen. Chicago has a stranglehold on that state. Ask anybody who doesn't live in Chicago, that's what they will tell you. Uh, I mean, look at how many sheriffs, I think virtually almost every county, I think there's maybe three or four counties where they've said that they will enforce the ban. There's three or four counties where there's no data on, and there's dozens and dozens and dozens of counties where they said, we're not gonna enforce this. So uh, look, it just, it is what it is. It's, you know, it's and, a state run by one city. And I just keep asking myself, why always Illinois? But I, I'm not gonna get into that there. I'll offend people. <laughs> so thanks again, Tom, for your insight. Truly appreciate it. It's always good to have you here. Thanks, Evan. Before I let you go, we have a secret gun giveaway going on. It's happening right now. It's absolutely free, but it does end really soon. So click the link in the description down below to see which brand new gun you could win.